take a picture okay, of me sneezing. So, systematics. <laughs> systematics is the study of uh, relating organisms together and how they vary from each other. Okay. Uh, mamba is a type of dance. Oh, wait, it's actually mamba. not. It's a type of snake. Uh, I'm, I'm actually the world expert on mambo as well, and that's a different presentation. That was a joke. <laughs> Feel free to laugh anytime. All right, thank you. Okay. Systematically, if you are a mambo, you are one of these five animals. Uh, there is the debate going on about a sixth species, but until I see a paper published on it, I am not buying it. Mm -hmm. Let me go over here so I can... You can tell that you're a real reptile guy, but instead of using a laser pointer, you're using a temp gun. <laughs> Good, this, here. this is a black mamba. This is Dendroaspis polylepis. This is a black tailed Jameson's mamba, which is known as Dendroaspis jamesoni camose. <clears throat> Up here, this guy right here, that's an East African green mamba. That's Dendroaspis angustus. Uh, although these two snakes here are a different color, they're actually the same, <clears throat> sorry, same type of snake. Those are West African mambas, also known as Dendroaspis varius, and then we've got a nice little uh, Dendroaspis jamesoni, jamesoni down at the bottom. So systematically, if you're a mamba, you're one of those guys up there. Um, but we're going to, as I said, we're going to discuss mainly black mambas. Um, black mambas have an absolutely enormous range. Uh, if you look at that, that is a huge, huge part of Africa. Um, Snake bite is a huge problem there, and that's one of the things that we're going to discuss as well, but you know, absolutely enormous range in Africa. Where are we going? There we go. Okay. Uh, being that they have such an enormous range, there actually is quite a lot of variance in the way that they look. Um, I was hoping that this would translate slightly better. <coughs> I guess not. Um, Mamba, black mamba is found in the southern part of the range, tend to have a bit of a dull, sort of gunmetal gray color. This is actually one that was caught in uh, Hoats Pruitt in South Africa, which is an absolute hotbed for mamba activity. Uh, the northern part of the range, this is one that was actually pulled uh, out of a public market in Mogadishu, Somalia. That was a fun day. Mm -hmm. And uh, the far right here, which is probably the most commonly seen one in captivity, from Tanzania, you can actually see the like a gray color, and hopefully you can make out the banding there. Uh, that's actually a gravid female as well, which those are the nice things. Okay, um, going back to Africa, um, we know that a lot of Africa looks like this, but the vast majority of it looks like this. So it is a prime location for all reptiles, especially things like mom. This was a, a nice sort of segue point. This is actually just a page out of a, a book that I happen to quite like a lot. Um, and there's a, a really nice illustration, but unfortunately, you can't see it, uh, of a black mamba sort of head pattern, side pattern, and ventral scale <coughs> pattern as well. Mm -hmm. Anyone have any questions up till now? Mm -hmm. For a picture of Africa, you had a green ring and a red ring. No, 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 that's actually a great question, I'm glad you asked. Okay, so there's uh, generally two terms would be uh, Eastern Africa and Western Africa uh, as far as animals go. Um, oddly, I don't know why they split it here, but the red is considered the Eastern range of the, green mamba, of the Black Mamba, and the green is actually considered the Western range. <clears throat> and it sort of applies to a lot of animals uh, that inhabit that sort of area. But why they start the delineation for West Africa, you know, sort of towards the middle of the continent, I'm not really sure, but you know, that's sort of uh, where we're at. But that was a good question. Thank you. There we go. All right, so this is Albert Gunther. All right, he's a wonderful chap. He was a, a German born, but a British accomplished uh, biologist, herpetologist, and ichthyologist. <clears throat> uh, he died in 1914 in Kew Gardens, which is in London, which is probably one of the most beautiful places on the face of the earth. And last time I checked, I'm not sure if the figure is, is still accurate, but it was the largest collection of uh, exotic plants of anywhere in the world. So, what a great place to have a heart attack. Wow. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> hey. All right, so uh, in 1964, Albert Gunther 
got one of these. Uh, did I say 1964 or 1864? Oh, I meant 1864. Okay. So 1864. <laughs> Albert Gunther received one of these. Now, not this exact one. But this is a wet specimen of a black mamba, which I'm not sure if you guys have any interest in looking at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. John, you've already seen it. Um, <laughs> this is more of a, a sort of a medical specimen. This had a necropsy done to it, so there's a little bit of uh, open snake underneath. But you can get a pretty good look at a black mamba. I'm not sure if anyone's interested, but... Uh, Pass it around. I'll leave Pass it around. <laughs> 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 All right, well, <laughs> hey, you know, we can look while you talk. Okay, I'm sorry, just don't drop it. No, no, no. <laughs> And uh, he published this paper, uh, Report on Collection of Reptiles and Fishes, made by Dr. Kirk in the Zambezi and Nyasa regions. Uh, and that was published in a uh, Natural History Museum, the equivalent of its society in London. And uh, I've been nice enough to highlight the Zambezi, Zambezi and Nyasa regions. Uh, obviously, we can see the Zambezi River here. And this is uh, pretty much this area in between here. Uh, this would be what would be considered the Nyasa region. It is now called, oh, sorry, that's the mouth of the Zambezi River. Quite beautiful, so you see a lot of you know, lush greenery here. <clears throat> a lot of open scrubland to this way. I mean, there's maybe you know, half a mile distance in between them there. So uh, quite, <clears throat> quite different landscapes. And uh, this is actually the Nyasa area. It's now known as Lake Malawi. Um, anyone that keeps African cichlids or the like, uh, a lot of your <clears throat> Sorry, all your fishery is coming from there. Mm -hmm. And uh, one absolutely terrible thing with that, that would be to uh, be the field researcher for that project to call that area your office every day. <laughs> so uh, we should all be so lucky. Okay. So Dendrophus polylepis. So Albert Gunther received a single specimen in a jar, something probably preserved far better, far, far worse than that one, rather. And, uh, he decided to call it Dendroaspis polylepis. No, binomial nomenclature is the two name naming system that's given to all organisms on the planet. Um, and they all typically mean something. Uh, they're usually a mixture of Latin and Greek. And uh, Dendroaspis literally means tree snake. So it's pretty fair to say that most mambas are quite often found in trees. The four species that I discussed earlier they're predominantly arboreal 95% of their time up off the ground. Uh, black mambas would be just as happy in a tree as they would in a scrubland or absolutely anywhere. These guys are anywhere and everywhere. Um, they also are often uh, bumping into heads with humans. They have no problem living in the attic or quite happily in your kitchen if you should so let them in there. But I'll actually get to those specific things a little bit later as well. Quite humble beginnings. Um, if you're a black mamba, more likely than not, your life is going to start out in a termite mound, an anthill or a robin tree. Um, these places are, are often <clears throat> laid pretty much on the outskirt of where a scrub brush would be, right before uh, a bit of woodland there. These areas will often get sort of direct sunlight and will maintain a temperature between 84 and 92 degrees throughout uh, pretty much 12 months out of the year. Um, they also would uh, protect against potential predators that might come and damage the eggs. And the amazing thing is when babies are hatched out, they pretty much crawl out of those holes and go right into the uh, woodland behind them. Um, when they get a little bit older, a little bit more confident, they're going to venture out into the, the scrub land to uh, pick on bigger prey. Awesome. When babies are born, they're typically around 36 centimeters, which is 14 inches. Uh, some people like a visual reference. These are also things that are 14 inches. That is a wrench. That is snow that people are complaining about. And that chap right there, that largemouth bass, is approximately 14 inches. <laughs> thanks, thanks. All right. so. Black mambas may end up being creatures of habit, which is uh, pretty amazing and a lot of reptiles are. Uh, there's a, a paper in particular, a study of the black mamba in KwaZulu Natal, South Africa, with particular reference to long-term refugia. That was written by Tony Phelps, who's an absolute genius when it comes to working with anything uh, reptile-related in South Africa. Um, there's
they're going to take the same paths, they're going to bask in the same places, live in the same trees, and they're going to carry this on as long as they possibly can. There's a, an amazing account in that paper that actually talks about uh, a, uh, a, a, a wrapped space in someone's house that actually contained numerous clutches of hatched eggs, stuck shit. So there have been like multiple generations Absolutely fantastic. Okay, weaver birds, those birds that make their really cool nests upside down. The reason they do that is pretty much because of mambas and boom slang, which are another uh, venomous snake sound found <coughs> in the eastern part of Africa. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. 